popularity just does not seem to wane. Rampart, this is Squad 51. Go ahead, 51. I'm stunned that the show has resonated for as long as it has. I'm a rescue man. I train to be a rescue man, and I like being a rescue man. Do you know what a paramedic is? Not exactly. The most important thing to come out of emergency was the way it affected emergency medicine across the United States. You know the fact that you're still alive to those two paramedic firemen. Wow, man, can I be next? It's so odd to be in your 70s talking about a show that you did 50 years ago. I know when the show started, there was hardly any EMS services in the United States. I've got to tell you guys are the greatest. I remember vividly the day I got my first paramedic card and held it in my hands. I said, oh, wow, I'm Johnny Gage. Among all the other shows that I watched as a kid, this was the one that really stuck with me. Present. <laughs> It's amazing the following that that show still has. Can you stuff cotton in that thing? Well, then I can't hear it. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. When the emergency show started, then all the cities in Los Angeles wanted paramedics. All the cities across the country wanted paramedics. A TV show can have a profound impact, and that was emergency. Cozy TV presents Emergency, the show that saved your life, a 50th anniversary celebration. It's absolutely stunning to me. Uh, after 50 years, uh, this show, Emergency, still resonates with so many people. I can think of no other show that has had a more positive impact on society, and I, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say it's, it's probably saved millions of lives. I'm not aware of another TV show that it has, has had the impact on legal change and saving lives, anything like emergency. All of us feel so safe knowing we have firemen like you. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. When we were kids, we would get in the trucks and pretend that we were, you know, driving Squad 51, even though it didn't look anything like Squad 51, driving patients, you know, here, there, and everywhere. Well, I think it has staying power because of the fact that it didn't stray far from its roots, that it stayed about the paramedic program, about emergency medicine, and about these characters and about who they were, um, who the characters were as people. And once that took off, EMS took off because of the show. Well, first off, paramedics really didn't exist. That was a brand new word. I would never heard it before. It, but you have to understand, when we were doing the show, we didn't know how popular the show was. I mean, we, we knew it was popular. We just didn't know that it was having such an effect on the uh, emergency medicine system uh, in this country. Gage? Yes, sir. That special training program, remember? We were talking about it a couple of days ago. Yes, sir, the para something or other. Paramedics. At that time, we were only known as a mobile intensive care unit or a heart rescue unit. And Gaylord Aleshy came from the Air Force and he said, what you guys are are paramedics. And went, okay, that sounds good. The BP is 100 over 80. There's not a function that, that goes by uh, where somebody doesn't come up to me and go, hey, I am, I'm a firefighter paramedic because of the show. I'm a nurse, a doctor, a police officer, a, a first responder because of this show. All I can say is I'm blessed because that show took me off the streets and got me interested in the field that, that I eventually became an explorer and actually got hired. I mean, what was the odds of me actually getting on the LA County Fire Department? I was under contract at Universal Studios at the time. And so my boss, Monique James, uh, brought me in and she said, darling, you know, she had this affectation. Uh, uh, everything was darling, you know, darling this and darling that. And she goes, darling, you are going to play. And she held up this card. She didn't really know what it was either. She goes, you are going to play Los Angeles County firefighter paramedic Johnny Gage on a new show called Emergency. And the first thing I said was, what the hell's a paramedic? and she lifted up the card and looked at it again. She goes, I have no idea, but we're all going to find out. 
is still ahead on Emergency, the show that saved your life. Coming up, the origins of EMS. The pilot episode of Emergency was basically a plea to change the law. Let's say if you take 1970, paramedics didn't exist. Uh, every state had a law against, uh, you know, that prohibited the uh, unauthorized practice of medicine. They were also civil liability, like anyone, even if they had medical training, if they were not a physician, uh, they could be sued if they stopped to give em emergency care. Why should I or anybody else spend 12 weeks or 12 minutes learning to do what we can't do? When the program was first being initiated in LA County and across the country, a lot of doctors were against it. There were lawyers against it. There were the nursing unit unions were against it. The idea of firefighters doing advanced medical care in the field in an uncontrolled setting. Doctors didn't think it could be done. They didn't think it could be done safely. But two unauthorized men treated those people out there. We did the only thing we could. Sure you did. And what would you have done if further complications had set in? Diagnose them on your own, flip the coin? Those people are all right. We just saw them. Yes, I know. I'm trying to tell you what could have happened. The two of you, the fire department, and the county would have been sued to the hilt. And you'd have earned the most destructive publicity possible for your precious program. The captain had a lineup, and he said they're starting some kind of a new rescue program over at Harvard General Hospital where you guys will be sticking needles in people's hearts. Who wants to volunteer? What we want to do is, is see if we can train you to go out and stabilize someone and bring them into the hospital. It wasn't clear that paramedics were going to be licensed in states anytime soon. But the stark truth of the matter was, is if you had a cardiac event back then before advanced care was brought to you, you were probably gonna die. So Kenny Hahn takes this idea up to Ronald Reagan uh, and tells him about this new program, paramedics, and Ronald Reagan said, no, I'm not raising taxes. Kenny Hahn, being Kenny Hahn, just kept pushing it, pushing it. Saying, you know, you know, I want you to rethink this. Will you rethink this? And he said, okay, so where are you going to put all these paramedics? Well, we're going to put them in the in fire stations. They're strategically, historically, they're placed all over the city to get to cover the whole city at a, within seven to eight minutes uh, uh, arrival time. And he said, well, well, what if I had a heart attack here, and you're having to come from there? Can you cross these lines? And he said, oh yeah, yeah, we're not going to section off the city. Wherever there's the closest one, that's, and then we'll take you to the hospital if we have to. And he goes, huh, okay. Bam, just like that, we got paramedics. Now the reason why he did that is that his father had a heart attack and had the ambulance company that was only like about a mile and a half away from his house been able to cross that imaginary line and go pick him up and take him to the hospital, he would have lived. But he said he had to wait another extra eight, nine, ten minutes before he got to him and then to the hospital, but he passed. And just like that, we have a paramedic program. And so the Wedsworth Townsend Act was just a of an experimental measure to say, let's try this, let's see what it looks like, uh, and then if it works, we can eventually offer the services in, in all the counties of California. All right, ma'am, ma'am, come on, step out of the way. All right, there, stay and handle right. this. And here comes Jack Webb, Pop Senator, here comes emergency to show the public what you can have, what we have, what we're working on, and what you should have. So the the pilot episode, this two-hour two pilot episode, was basically a dramatization of the passage of the Wedsworth Townsend Act. Dr. Kelly Brackett, Rampart Emergency Hospital, Los Angeles, is with us today. I understand Dr. Brackett has some opinions concerning the bill now before us. Dr. Brackett? And so it's a great mix of kind of dramatization and, and realistic portrayal of the need for legal change. 70% of all cardiac cases never live long enough to reach a hospital. How do you think your mother or your wife or the good guy next door would make out under those conditions? Everybody thinks Jack Webb created the show. He did not. He owned it, but he didn't create it. 
Bob Senator created it. And uh, he was also our executive producer for, for every year that we did the show. Great guy, a wonderful guy to sit around and talk to, and he loved being around firemen. He even came to a party at my house one time. And I, I couldn't believe that, that someone as important as he was that would you know, come to our house for a, for a party with firemen. It was his show. Jack Webb entrusted this idea to Bob Senator. Jack said, look, Adam-12 is going to go off the air. And he didn't want to get caught without a show. He, he wanted to have another show in place. And uh, so he said, I'm thinking about you know, doing a show in the ER. Why don't you get on down there and find out you know, what it's all about and see if we can't make a show out of the uh, emergency room. And uh, so Bob did, you know, he went down. But he, he saw a real kind of odd thing. He saw these firemen running around. Uh, and they, they were bringing people in and he said, you know, well, what, what's that? Captain Jim Page of the LA Fire Department saw this show as an opportunity to spread the message of paramedics across the country. He had been assigned the role of showing Bob Senator around our fire department and uh, telling him about our paramedic program. He said, well, they're fire rescue. And he said, well, well you know, what is that? He said, well, you know, they're paramedics. And he said, paramedics, what's that? And yeah, you know, Johnny Gage came from Jim Page. And I don't, I don't think he want, necessarily wanted it to be that way. It just kind of worked out that way. That's the story. So they, they wanted to make a character. They were so impressed with Jim that they wanted to make a character about him. And uh, he did not want that. And that's a typical firefighter. You know, they, they want to be behind the scenes. They don't want to be in the camera. And uh, so they said, OK, we won't make it uh, Jim Page. So it became John Gage. He was smarter than your average, your average guy sitting in a fire station. And he just had this way with people that, uh, and this memory for people that was just amazing. And he had an incredibly impactful career. You know, he was bigger than life. And he, he had so many facets and affected so many people in such a positive way across the nation. We have what we have, directly or indirectly, because of Jim Page, absolutely. He was voted one of the top 10 most influential fire chiefs for the 20th century. He's also known as the, the father of fire-based EMS. Um, just a great man. He was a, a believer in it, and, and he really wanted paramedics to uh, thrive, and he thought this was one of the best uh, activities that you could train uh, firemen to do. And if we had trained emergency personnel, uh, then you could save lives on a major scale. Chief said I was getting overtrained. He says I need a little field duty. Out of where? 51's brand new station. You play your cards right, I'll let you team up with me. <laughs> he needs me. Once that happened, once that show aired, once it became popular, once people start hearing the buzz about it and tuning in and seeing what it was, it took a, this word paramedic, which nobody knew what it meant, within a few, within a season or two, it was a, it was a, it was a household name. Communities all over the United States were, they were watching the show and they went, wait a minute, is this real? Uh, is this, is this really happening? Well, we want that. It's hard to draw a straight line between a TV show or even a movie and an industry and what, you know, how it, how it made the industry what it is and expand on what, what was there. And, you know, you can easily draw that line with, with emergency. He not only memorizes the regulations, but he memorizes the commas and the periods and the exclamation points. And, and, then, he, and then he repeats it all back to you at the meetings. I swear, man, it's going to drive me crazy. Still ahead on Emergency, the show that saved your life. The people of Emergency. I asked Bob Senator, why can't I get the girl? And, uh, and he said, I'm, you'll never get the girl. I said, why? He said, because the character Johnny Gage is more relatable. Mostly, I try not to let it go to my head. I hope you're better at medicine than you are at modesty. Squad 51, first aid rescue. And I said, well, you know, can I at least, you know, get one? And he goes, not on my watch. My wife was a fan of the show. She was in Randy's fan club as a young teenage girl. Randy Mantooth is great. 
Um, absolutely loved his character and loved his portrayal. Randy's fan mail was through the roof. Mine was pretty good, but uh, a lot of mine was how to see, how to write, how to get in touch with him, you know. That you said it didn't bother you. It doesn't. When I was first hired, it was by Jack. Jack was the one who sort of brought me into the program. I had no idea what a pilot was, had no idea that the show was gonna take off. It just was another job. And David Jansen, who was working on O'Hara, came on the set while I was uh, doing the audition. And it was really, I was, I was horrible. I mean, I was so frightened that uh, I was really stiff. And he just walked on the set and put his arm around me and said, you know, just go ahead, kid. Just dude, relax. Have some fun here. Yeah, you want to have me the soap there? Never mind. I'll get it. And I kind of think that not only Jack, but in a way, it was David Jansen that was instrumental in my, you know, signing on the show. He became my best friend, and he's still to this day my best friend. And I think that 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 that's what people tune into. You can't make that up. You, you can't manufacture that. It's either real or it's not real. It's true. Where do you want to start? When you talk to paramedics and, and uh, you know, members of the fire department, guys, firefighters, a lot of times it comes up the partner uh, part of it. You get close. Oh, yeah, you guys are so heroic. How about it? Oh, well, yeah, because when we left, we uh, had dinner on. Oh, come on, you guys. This not even use any glue. My lifetime as an EMS provider, I've had partners that I've worked with for, you know, months and years at a time, and I can tell you that a lot of the same banter and a lot of the same discussions happen. Are you going to build this yourself? Myself? Well, what happened to you? Aren't we partners? This looks like something from a science fiction movie. Well, this is our base station. We make uh, radio contact with our fire department paramedics. Dynamite. I've been looking for this place. Uh, well, look, this is a restricted area. Nurse Dixie, she was in charge. Room three. She meant business and wanted to get things taken care of. She could solve the world's problems over a cup of coffee. I guess maybe I learned a lot from Julie London. 10-451, start IV with ringers. Everybody said, said, wow, Julie London, did you have a crush on her? Well. No, she was four years younger than my mom. I didn't have a crush on her, but I adored her. Do you know anything about singing? A little. I was very close to she and uh, Bobby Troop. Bobby Troop, Julie's uh, uh, husband, um, who wrote Route 66, by the way. Met a lot of musicians through them, through Julie. Um, you know, went one night to hear Duke Ellington and Sarah Vaughan and Billy Eckstein, went back to Duke's apartment and sat down and talked about music. And they were loved by, you know, countless musicians. Here comes old Dr. Brackett. No matter you're ill, he can hack it. Hey, you know, for a doctor, he plays pretty bad. She taught me how to swear. She taught me the value of coming to, to work prepared, as did Bob Fuller. Bob Fuller, who played Dr. Brackett. Man, that guy, nothing stumped him. He knew his lines, uh, and he would say them without error. Nurse started an IV with D5W with normal saline. He was really good, you know, he was really, you know, he was, he was an established leading man and probably the most, well, undoubtedly, the most uh, experienced of all of us there. Tidy bit of surgery, Bracken. We do good work early. Dr. Morton was played by Ron Pinkard. Put your finger on this. I've got the blood gas sample. He appeared on almost every episode. Station 51A, shift on duty. Captain Hank Stanley, Chief. Captain, good to meet you. He would be the one to come in and shut it all down. Why don't we all go and watch? Marco Lopez played a fireman named Marco Lopez on the show. He released a cookbook after the show was over. My son and I even at times make Marco's Firehouse 51 chili. I think I smell something burning. Oh, the chili! I actually had gotten an opportunity to work with Mike Stoker, who drove the fire engine in the show. And they had to have somebody on the show who could drive all of the equipment. 
legally because none of the actors were cleared to drive any of the actual equipment. Don't, don't play with that. Get out of there. Don't play with it. Put that. The real boot was actually a dog out of Fire Station 14 in South Central LA. And uh, everything in the show mirrored real life. And that dog was a real dog. And the, they used that dog. And boot was a real fire dog out of Station 14. Look at him. He's arguing with a dog. And he's losing. You know, some of the underrated characters, how about Vince the policeman? All right, fellas. Can I be any help to you? It always showed up that nobody really thinks about Vincent Policeman, but he showed up as the police officer in most, most of the calls. Those underrated people, but they made the show work. Chet? Huh? I don't know a firehouse that doesn't have a Chet. I worked over the years of my career. I've worked with I don't know how many Chets in my career. Chet, you can pull that stuff on everybody else, but you're not going to pull it on me. Tim Donnelly played that role of the stinker, the instigator, quite well. And uh, we, we all have that guy in every fire station. You said it, not me. And he helped not only the crew, but the production and his character and, and us. He was a great catalyst. And, you know, he's, he will be missed when we all get together. Still ahead on Emergency, the show that saved your life. Up next, stars and guest stars. My uncle was paramedic number eight uh, in LA County. And Randy Mantooth and Kevin Ty would ride along with those early paramedics and learn how to be paramedics. Randy and Kevin came to our station and rode with us on and off for a couple of months before the show started so that they could see the kind of runs that we went on, our, uh, the way that we handle ourselves, you know, in the various rescues and fires. And the writers did somewhat the same thing. They would uh, come down to the station and they would sit around and they'd talk to us about different rescues and fires that we had been on, and then all of a sudden you would see it in an episode. The real stories of our firefighters and our paramedics that went out on calls, came back and said, can you believe this? You know, I went on this call. This lady had her toe stuck in a faucet. Those things really happen. Hi. And I noticed a couple of different things that I was on that turned out to be in the program. One had to do with a child getting his finger stuck in a gumball machine and then having to break the gumball machine to get his finger out and we had gumballs all over the floor. I think my favorite was snake bite. Oh man, I've been bit by a rattler. And I'll tell you the reason why. Everybody thinks, oh, it's because I'm working with a snake and what have you. And I gave myself my, I started my own IV. Now, that's not why I liked it. What I liked about it was that Jim Page wrote it. Now, Jim Page was a battalion chief for LA County Fire, and he wrote that script. And we all thought, oh, okay, this firefighter is gonna write a script, yeah, right. Turned out to be one of the best we, we had. The tones are iconic. You can find thousands of people who are EMS providers or, or in the fire service, and that's their ringtone, or that's their alarm when they get a text message. I found myself mimicking you know, the, the, the actions of Johnny and Roy, you know, uh, I think every, every paramedic has done that scene where they flip open the, the, the drug thing in the back of the ambulance. And it's on the, the very beginning of the show is, is where Randy pops the tops off the Dextro. Yeah, everybody was, you know, flipping caps. It was fun. And, you know, it, you're doing what Johnny was doing. All the time. But the younger kids would look at me like, why are you doing that? It's like, oh, go watch the emergency and you'll understand what that is. It was a really marketable show. Nobody had Adam-12 toys, nobody had Dragnet toys. But yet, you know, back in that time, there was all kinds of emergency toys. I had trucks, I had action figures, I had comic books. I love the lunch boxes and I love that I've got the thermos that went with them. I had an emergency lunchbox that I took with me uh, every day for a year, you know? So yeah, that was not uncommon back then. Don't have a lunch pill, but I have Squad 51. This company called LGN made the, for the eight inch figures. The action figure, figure didn't look like me at all. I thought, you know, 
who else posed for this? Because it's not me. Uh, the one with Kevin looked pretty much like it, but man, I didn't, you know. First off, they were putting muscles. I'm a skinny guy, right? But they were putting muscles on this action figure, and I thought, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look like me. Everybody talks about the board game. I never did play the board game. I didn't know there was a board game, but I do now, and I have two of them. The fact that you can still buy a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox truck that has, you know, all the logos and decals and stuff on it still, 50 years later, that's, that's incredible. Uh, just a reminder of, of a show that was loved as a kid that I still love today and, and great memories. It speaks to how marketable the show was and somebody at NBC was, you know, brilliant to think, hey, let's put Johnny and Roy's face on everything and we'll sell it. And of course, you know, the general public was like, yeah, give us more, give us more, give us more. I guess I've come a long way in this world where I have my own action figure and my own lunchbox. Still ahead on Emergency, the show that saved your life. Where is the squad today? I think the appearance of guest stars was part of the lifeblood of the show. You risked your life to save mine. If you hadn't have crawled into that little space and taken care of me, I'd have died. Every single episode seemed to feature some well-known person from TV, movies, or sports. Probably my favorite was Adam West. Roy said yeah, he'd like to have your autograph. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Well, I did not. He's shy. You're the greatest. Vic Webster. John Travolta, John did an episode. Man, I never thought anybody would find me here. And apparently that was his very first line ever on, 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 uh, on film. Cecily Tyson. I'd like to keep him overnight as a precaution, though. You can take him home tomorrow, but he will need several days rest. Nick Nolte appeared on the show, and he is extremely young. I think he's going to be all right, Cal. A any complications? Kidneys are functioning, EKG looks good. Bobby Sherman was a teen idol. Hi, how are you? He appeared on Emergency as a guest star and was so inspired by the whole concept of paramedics and emergency medicine that he became a paramedic. Well, I've uh, concluded that with a great deal of additional training, under close supervision, of course, that um, I might make an adequate paramedic. <laughs> he went on to become a captain in the LAPD. Deidre Hall was a nurse in a couple episodes. Uh, we better immobilize this knee, it might be fractured. Hey, man, don't say that. I play basketball for a living. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, yes, sir. He was on there. Uh, no, I mean, if you, sit, if you sit here and start thinking, you'll think of dozens. Please hurry. You also carry out the same duties as firemen. What have you fellas got against him? A hard working guy that's trying to turn an honest buck. He was doing a front vault with a full twist, and he fell and hit his head on the floor. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, Daddy, I love you. It's gonna be all right. Then let me take a look at you, okay? No, no, no. I want to go someplace else. When did you eat last? Just before the roof fell in on me. Is he alive? Yeah. My truck went through the intersection. It was free. And then all of a sudden, she, she comes like a bat out of hell and rams right into me. Who is he? Will he be all right? I think so. Uh, drop in on KJV. Can you think what I'm saying? I think you should let these men take a look at you. Out of sight. Mark Harmon appeared in a single episode of Emergency, and it was an interesting episode because it was a backdoor pilot for another show that they were possibly going to release. Tiger broke out because he was starving, just like the rest of these animals. 
You would think at a fire station they would be very careful about fire safety, but it seems like every second or third episode they end up setting something on fire. They do lose at least one television. The microwave explodes, there's a fire in the oven, and at one point Chet Kelly is trying to clean his new skis that he bought secondhand and manages to set them on fire as well. You're looking for Ellen Bart, right? You said the name of the week. He's hooked again. I'll bet she's over in supply. Stat, Dr. Smith, and emergency treatment room three. Roy, I was thinking we need some IV solution. Yeah, I know what you were thinking. This episode of Emergency is one of the first occurrences of air quotes in pop culture. Emergency is a spin-off of the show Adam 12, which itself was a spin-off of the show Dragnet. It becomes a little meta when the people on the shows are watching the other shows on television. It's just that I'm curious how Reed and Malloy got out of it, that's all. Look, it's just a television show. They seem to forget the fact that on the pilot, they met two characters from Adam-12 because they all exist in the same universe. Suppose I buy you a plate of spaghetti some night. Kind you out of a free meal. <laughs> As everyone knows, totally generous. Thanks, guys. Now, didn't I tell you everything was gonna be A-OK? -okay? You know what? What? I'm gonna be a fireman when I grow up. Yeah, that seems a little kind of hokey nowadays. Well, maybe it does because that was the style. If you looked at Dragnet, if you look at, if you look at um, Adam-12, compared to today's day. I Maybe mean, it's a little bit hokey, but it's, when we really look at it deeper, it really is more accurate. But the public knows that too. They know, they know it innately. And, and I think it was that authenticity that has made it survive when so many other fire shows have not. They, they, they think that Hollywood can write a better script. I think Emergency proved that uh, they really can't. You can't top what really happens. And you'd be amazed how many predicaments people can get themselves into. How'd this happen? I don't know. I was cleaning the chimney. Yeah? Well, with what? Oh, that was a rough spot. Some fine sandpaper and a little gasoline. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. James Page, who was the lead technical advisor, and the other technical advisors, it was very important to them that it be authentic. The original paramedics and a few others became the technical advisors because the LA County Fire Department said if you're going to do this we want it to be technically correct. You can have all the drama you want but when you're responding on rescues and you're responding on fires and you're pulling hose we want it to be technically correct. So there were a few things where we we gave a little bit. Uh, one is we uh, at the start of the first season we made them where they're helmets inside the squad because that was something that we were supposed to do. They hated that. For one thing, it messed up their hair. Firemen stink. All right, kid, let's have a look at your arm. Come on. I, I recall one time when we were first starting out, um, you know, we're both there responding and, you know, and I'm, I'm re you know, have the stethoscope around myself and I'm, you know, watching and listening and listening and and then finally we cut and I felt you know really good about it all the lines went through and it was great and the, the technical assistant comes up he says well we have a problem I said well what it, what was it I thought it went really well he says well you didn't have the stethoscope in your ears he's in here get me a spare cuff and stethoscope all right most everything that went on in an emergency would happen in a fire station, the way they ate their meals. Let's eat already, I'm starved. What is it? Hash. Again? The way they took their runs, the way they responded and stuff like that was a mirror image of, of what we did. You can't count the amount of lives saved. Any amount of careers and people, you know, professional lives changed by highlighting this kind of new thing back then. Still ahead on Emergency, the show that saved your life. Collectibles and more. Welcome to the County of Los Angeles Fire Museum. This is our showroom. The equipment that's surrounding me here is emergency. We have Engine 51, we have Squad 51, uh, both Engine 51. We have the Crown and the Ward of the France, and they're, they're beautiful. 
Uh, we also have gear from the show. We have the original turnout coats, original helmets, uh, defibrillators, all the stuff that went with the show, we have it. I must admit, I, I drove Squad 51 as a real paramedic squad because our department was out of reserve squads and that one was in our sitting up in our training center and it was terrible. It was in terrible shape. It, if it started, it overheated. It was not very red. It, it had been sitting outside for a while. It really was neglected. So it was kind of a crapshoot every time you took this thing out to drive it. In fact, I had to get towed out of the intersection right down the street from the museum one day because it broke down on me. And uh, Paul Schneider and Jay Leno pushed it out of an intersection in Hollywood at one point years ago. This was the actual vehicle used in the show. We acquired it from our fire department. We drove it and I must tell you that when we drove it, we went on calls, people still stopped and said, is that the real one? And it was the real one and I, I, I got to drive it. In fact, uh, somebody saw that uh, a brush fire out in Topanga uh, when we had a brush fire out there and he said, Man, that looks exactly like old Squad 51. They said, yeah, that was Squad 51. They said, what are you doing? Well, why are you, why are you getting us so close to the flames? That, you know, that, that's, that's our legacy. 1999, our museum took an interest in doing a full restoration on it. Every nut and bolt came off, everything was stripped down, and we spent way more than the vehicle itself was worth in doing that. And made that look exactly like it was the day Kevin and I scooted our butts across that vinyl. So we did that restoration in 1999. It's still holding up pretty well after 22 years of post-restoration. And there's always maintenance going on and there's always additions to try to make it a little bit better with equipment inside. Um, it runs well, it's all original Dodge, and um, we have the actors have come and they've signed the interior doors. It's kind of weird sitting there because that was my office for seven years. So this thing has a lot of history, not just from the show, but since then. Yeah, you could put a price tag on the nuts and bolts, you know, of an old, you know, Dodge truck, basically, but you can't put a price tag on the fact that it, that if it's historical significance. Right now, we're currently restoring this 1969 Suburban C-10 ambulance from the TV show Emergency. The cool thing about this ambulance is it was wrecked on the show, and it was wrecked on purpose. Mr. Senator didn't like this, this ambulance because it was hard to film it, because it was hard to control the lighting in. He said, I'm gonna wreck this thing, because I never want to see this vehicle again. So man, boom, he wrecked it. About a year ago, we took it apart. And I don't mean a little bit. Everything's been done, the motor's been done, the trans has been done, the rear end's been done. And it's the details that take the most time. The big stuff makes it look pretty, the little stuff makes it look right. Probably the most rewarding thing about doing all the museum is the emotional connection that so many people have. The museum is an amazing space. It's beautiful. We have people from all over the world. New Zealand, Japan, Australia, Germany. Little kids show up at our museum dressed as Johnny and Roy, and they know the episodes. A lot of people come in and they think, I've made it to Mecca. And they're almost having to stop and take a breath before they walk into the museum. They come from all over, and they're, they're great people. Everybody, I think, has that mentality of, I want to be the hero in people's lives. To be able to give people an opportunity to see the squad, to see the engine, to be up close to it. Seeing the effect of these pieces of equipment and the show Hanna people, and and really, and, and people asking for my autograph. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just a bonehead, LA County firefighter paramedic, why are you asking for my autograph? Because I was wearing the shirt and I was driving the squad. And I came away with a greater appreciation of what we had. We had a German couple because we do have visitors from all over the world. The gentleman told me, he said, hey, uh, in broken English German, uh, uh, that I want to ask my girlfriend to marry me in Engine 51, is that okay? And I said, absolutely, only if I get to videotape it. And he got down on his knee in the front of Engine 51 and he asked his girlfriend from Germany to marry her. And she said yes, so it was awesome.
We had a retired lieutenant from North Carolina come and visit us, and I offered the opportunity for him to sit in the squad, and he thought he hit the lottery. So he sat in the squad, and his wife started taking pictures, and I told him to turn towards me so we could take the pictures. And I looked at him, and he had tears running down his face. And I looked at him, and of course I said, you're not crying, are you? And we both kind of laughed and chuckled, and he goes, okay, a little bit. It's about those people. It's not really about the, the trucks. The trucks are cool, and they'll be around once we're all gone, and we'll make them beautiful, but it's more about the people. It's about us and about our, our, our family, our fire family, our EMS family, and, and those that are that understand that have gone into harm's way. And it, it's not all about building fire trucks. It's about, it's about taking care of each other. And here we take care of the fi old fire engines and we take care of the old firefighters, so. The men there. are apparently <coughs> participating. <coughs> That's us right there. Family. It's gonna have, have the jaws to get her out. Paramedic program is out there in all the communities in the country. I didn't think I was ever gonna get out of here. Right. You don't have to fill out any paper. They are just there to get you past maybe the worst moment in your life. We all share that love for that TV show. I hummed that theme and I popped those tops off the dextrose. I'm in favor of more doctors, more hospitals, and better equipment. And I'm also in favor of this bill until those other things come along, because it will save lives. You got your public support because of an old TV show that won't die. We were so lucky, so lucky to be in that show. Got a great Jack story. We were doing a spin-off on, a, it was a show of animals, you know, taking care of animals. And there's a scene out in uh, an exterior where there's a little girl and, and we've got a goat that she was taking care of. We've got Mark Harmon and Albert Popwell and his Randy. And this is the scene I have and I had no dialogue. And this is Jack coaching me through the, the, the shot. Okay, look at the girl. Look at the scope. Look at the girl. Look at your partner. Look at the scope. Look at Mark. Look down at the goat. The scope. The girl, the goat, cut. He comes up to me and he says, pal, that's what you do best. And thanks to all of our friends at the LA County Fire Museum for making this happen.